Tonight on Country Squire Radio, we're doing a Squire Select, baby. Ow! Yes, sir. It's going to be a lot of fun. Plus, we've got a great pipe question of the week all about getting char from your pipe into the taste buds of your mouth and how to do, deal with that in the classiest manner possible. Also, <laughs> we got quick fire questions, listener feedback, and a lot more happening tonight on Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD. Hey, Bo. Good evening, dude. Man, I am doing good. You didn't ask, did you? <laughs> I, I didn't, but I mean, I'm so, I'm so glad to know. I'm so glad to know. You, you handled it perfectly. Uh, Man, what what's happening with you? Ah, man, you know it's been uh it is it's been a busy day. Uh, you know the the school's out for the summer. I promised myself I wasn't going to sing tonight. Is that really a song? It, that is that's a you know that song. Come on, man. I okay, keep going. All keep right, answering fair the enough. question. Fair enough. Right. Fair enough. Right. <laughs> yes, school is out for the summer, and uh, and so yeah, I've been dealing with uh, you know uh, I, I love my kids, and uh, and it is always yeah. great to spend such wonderful time with them, but it does make it difficult to kind of get things done as you're uh, <laughs> as you're kind of juggling everything. Coming up on. with a little rugrats, man. Whew, man, Rugrats. I remember Rugrats. That was a thing of the past. No, these days they've got Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood and uh, Peg Plus Cat and all kinds of things that are. Uh, uh, a lot of fun and very educational as well, and very uh, very distracting when they <laughs> need be. But yeah, so that's that's uh, yeah. My my mind has been uh, has been kind of running to catch up uh, on on everything that's going on. But what about you, man? How how you been doing? You know, it's so crazy. Um, I, I, if if you know me, if you're around the shop and you ask how business is going this time of year. Um, I'm constantly complaining <laughs> because, uh, and and it's not just me. It's most retailers, particularly, uh, you know, tobacconists, uh, and and particularly in the southeast. Uh, you know, it, it it's just it's amazing people can even live here this time of year. And so, uh, you know, for it's every, not, it's not healthy. It's it, not likely. It's it, it's just it, it's it, unnatural. It, it it is unnatural. It, it kind of defies science, really. But uh, you know, so this time of year, I'm always uh, complaining because business is just so slow. And uh, particularly July, it's just such a such a terrible month for uh, for tobacco, uh, the premium tobacco in the southeast. And um, and and so anyway, you know, it's so hot. Everyone's on vacation and all this stuff. But um, anyway, I, I come to the shop today. I'm thinking, OK, I'm going to prep for the podcast. It'll be kind of a sleepy Monday. Uh, it's the last day of July. So, you know, everyone's out of town and no one. Uh, you know, it's it's like 95 degrees outside, so no one wants to be anywhere near uh, fire, <laughs> which uh, which kind of is what we major in. And so, uh, man, it was just it was it was off the chain today. I mean, it was oh, crazy. The door, the bell just kept jingling on the front of the shop, and it was just one after another after another. And uh, man, it was so exciting. I felt so honored to that these people would bear this uh, this terrible uh, humidity and heat to to come uh, come see us and. Uh, man, it was just great. We sold, uh, man, cigars, but but pounds and pounds of pipe tobacco and several pipes. And uh, man, it was just a just a really fun day. So it's one of those things that it kind of catches you off guard, you know. Oh, yeah. and, and and as a retailer, as a tobacconist on this side of the counter, you're always as soon as you think you've got the kind of seasons figured out and all that. Um, it, it just, uh, it just, it just surprises you, you yeah. know? So it was, it was kind of neat. Yeah. I, I, what's funny. I, I've found this group of folks and I, I find myself to be one of them that has been smoking more Latakia this summer, really? uh, because Latakia just burns so cool. You know, a lot of folks, uh, associate Latakia with, a uh, uh, real rich, bold flavors and those, those things are certainly there, but, um, it's such a cool burning tobacco. It just burns real real uh real cool it's easy on your tongue and so um yeah it, it, for some reason been uh been selling a lot of english blends recently it's been kind of neat that's i mean it is bizarre to be because like it's hot, just strange hot yeah. weather does not equal pipe smoking weather to me but that is i am clearly in and certainly not an english blend weather you know you, you would mean, you've think got so. this you're real robust kind of uh smoky scotchy peaty flavors and man we're just we're just moving some yeah. latakia it's all right. right i mean that's that's awesome man uh any i mean any what do you what do you think might be the the cause of it i mean is there again i think a lot of folks are just seeking something that kind of burns burns cool just cooler okay. yeah i mean right. it just burns burns cool no if it was yeah. like a fad in the industry well the no i mean of course you know a lot of kia blends are always popular you know nowadays i mean they mm -hmm. i think they've kind of come and gone throughout the years but um people now are, are big fans of we've talked you know on the show before about just these big lat bombs you know these heavy <laughs> uh, latakia just just bombs in your face and, yeah uh th those kind of tobaccos that uh you know in in the 70s would have made a tobacconist uh his his you know toenails curl because <laughs> <laughs> because you know the the it was just so too much latakia back then but um but you know nowadays a lot of folks they, that's kind of what they want they like that you know so push the um, limit yeah i don't know for some reason uh you know we've just been moving uh 
quite a few English blends. That's so, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's well, good. you know, uh, it makes the room smell awful, but it's great. <laughs> before we uh, before we dive into even even really the uh, the tradition top of the show, we've got to start things off by offering a huge congratulations uh, to new daddy and when, uh, and Country Squire Radio listener, new daddy man, Kurt Undertaker Piper on Twitter. He's not joining us live tonight Dude. because uh, he is with his uh, his four day old newborn kurt congratulations congratulations man. oh and uh, yeah it's a beautiful uh beautiful photo of uh a said newborn bundle of joy <laughs> it's so, great uh you know i mean from what we hear we're yeah. pretty good at like lulling the children to sleep so who knows maybe right now he's listening to the podcast and, and, and adult children too yeah apparently. i mean hey that's that's what we do that's what we do but congratulations that kurt sultry tobacco voice just you know <laughs> lulling you to sleep Da, 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 da. Oh wow! Okay, it's getting da, creepy. Da, da, da. Nope, nope, <laughs> nope. I apologize, Kurt. That's and funny, to man. Your child. Well, dude, man, congratulations. We're so uh, so happy. It looks like the pregnancy was normal and birth went great and all that. And we're, uh, I mean, we're, we're. I know y'all are probably not getting a lot of sleep, but uh, are really, really happy for you. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, congratulations. Hey, also uh, coming up, ladies and gentlemen, in the uh, in the wonderful world that we call the pipe world, uh, we have. The Grand Rapids annual uh, returning Country Squire Radio listener meetup. Oh, dude, that's great. Yeah. Fantastic. That's all, So you're going to Grand Rapids, going here, to Grand uh, Rapids. in the next couple of weeks. That's that right? right. In fact, we've got everything worked out, or at least a date selected anyway. Uh, but <laughs> it'll be the uh, Country Squire Radio Grand Rap Rapids listener meetup. It is going to be Saturday the 12th. Um, don't have the specifics quite yet in terms of where and the exact time, but it will be Saturday the 12th, Okay, likely sometime in the evening. I think I can pretty much go ahead and guarantee that, uh, but be following me as well as beard core and, uh, and we'll keep you guys updated as That's to great. what's going on. That's uh, great. In honor of said meetup, I am rocking my beard. Oh, you're core wearing your beard core shirt. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm, Solid. I'm looking forward to it, man. I always love meeting up with the, uh, the, the Grand Rapids family. Uh, you know, in, in the past, we've also had different folks, uh, come in from, uh, from, you know, a couple maybe like even there was one guy who came like three hours out once that's was, amazing i'm telling you it's yeah. crazy there's but, such a um such a really strong um pipe smoking community in the state of michigan it, oh yeah, yeah yeah and it's just been there forever I, i've been seeing a lot of activity recently surrounded uh surrounding paul's pipe shop and uh you know just such an amazing shop it's it's on my bucket list it's one of those mm. things where uh you've got to get there and see the museum he's got set up dedicated to pipe smoking and um you know they're just an incredible community all the uh, you know, events that they have going on, but just the history in, in those walls and, um, and, and it's such a robust pipe community. So, uh, man, that's, that's exciting, dude. I'm, I'm glad. And, uh, frankly, kind of envious. So. Yeah, it, it'll be a lot of fun. So it'll be in Grand Rapids. I think probably Indian River uh, Tobacco Traders. Not 100% yeah. sure on that yet, um, but, yeah. but one way or the other. Man, good friend Eric up there and uh, the tobacconist there at Indian River. And, um, just, does a, just does a wonderful job and uh, such, a, such a good guy and talented blender. Um, and, uh, man, I, I know y'all have a great time. Now, that's coming up uh, on Saturday the 12th up here, uh, you know, in, in just about a week or so. But this coming October... We've got the Texas Pipe Show. Ow! Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Get on, little doggies. That's right. That's right. Yes, man, Texas sir. Pipe Show, it's uh, Saturday, October 7th. Um, and, uh, man, it's it's going to be great. Yeah, we're looking forward <laughs> to having folks from uh, all over the country, but particularly Texas and uh, the Southwest and Southeast. A lot of folks will be there. Um, man, still have booths available, I think. And so uh, booths for uh, pipe carvers are actually free. Those uh, pipe carvers have... Uh, kind of priority as far as that. You may have to share a booth, but there will probably be space for you. You need to get in touch with them. Uh, and then folks after that will have, uh, you know, artisans that are associated with with the pipe smoking hobby, uh, tobacco folks, and 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 then, uh, you know, any ancillary stuff, you, you might have last choice on a booth, but you may be able to get one, which is going to be great. So um, anyway, it's uh, going to be really exciting. We'll be there and, uh, man, doing some recording and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And, uh, man, I'm fired up. It's going to be fun. We were, uh, yep. we were just kind of uh, arranging some uh, some plans later uh, last week and about you know doing a show from the showroom floor. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, make sure you're there. It's going to be Pop Safari Room in Fort Worth, Texas. That's October 7th. Uh, get your tickets now. Uh, if you are a carver, get your table while they are still available. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun eating some Texan barbecue. Uh, Delicious. It, it, barbecue and pipe tobacco. It may happen. <laughs> it may happen at the uh, at the Texas Pipe Show. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Also, we got some new members joining at the uh, Country Squire Radio Pipe Club. All right. Are you ready for this? Yeah. All right. We want to th thank a uh, new special Squire member, 
and and I I sometimes think y'all do this to me on purpose. I yeah. <laughs> Asa Giz Maverick, Giz Mervrick, Giz Mervick, guys, guys, I, th I think it's Asa Giz Mervick. All right, let's 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 let's. And Asa, you joined the uh the pipe club at the Squire level. Squire level. <laughs> All right, now now let's let's. I want to make sure I'm G I S Giz. That's that's how I how that's how I would pronounce I, I would that, think Giz. so. Yeah. So so Mer, or or Merv. Let's go with Merv. Giz Merv Ick. Right. Ike. Right. Giz Mervike. <laughs> Asa, welcome so much. Uh, thank you so much. Asa, welcome. thank you so much for joining the club, man, at the Squire level. We have a couple new pilgrims, too. Right? That's right. We've also got Peter. Oh, man. Lambrecht. 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 And uh, you got to be careful how you say that one. <laughs> also, you got Will Kelly as well. So welcome, guys. Yeah, Peter and Will, thank you so much. Uh, Asa, Peter, and Will, all for joining the, the Country Squire Radio uh, International Pipe Club. We're so happy to have you all on board. And, uh, man, you just, you're, you're just an integral part of what we're doing here. And you know, I, I, look, I, I, I think we need to start putting a requirement on this that um, no matter what your last name may be, putting like in parentheses, like it's German or it's Scottish or, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's Malaysian, like whatever, whatever Malaysian, it is. Right. No, I'm just saying, that's like, great. Yeah. I, I have no idea what kind of name is Gizmervic, and I'd be very curious to learn. No, that's yeah. We would Asa. We would love some background on your uh, your last name and your lineage. <laughs> you you yeah. as well, Peter. That's uh, <laughs> uh, Kelly. I mean, you know, that's I could I could pronounce that one. Although, yeah. watch watch Will email in and be like, guys, it's Calais. Right. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> His will be right. The most complicated one. I exactly. Mean, well, I tell you what, great. man. We've got an awesome show planned for tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are doing a Squire Select. Now, this is a lot of fun. We've uh, always enjoyed doing these since the earliest days of the podcast. And that is where we take various beverages and pair them up with pipe tobacco. Now, in the history of the show, we traditionally do whiskey of some sort. Uh, whiskey, bourbon, scotch, that sort of thing. Uh, we have been known to veer off from that, doing things like gin, tea. Uh, we've dabbled we've done with, some red wine. We've done some red wine. That's that as well. I think I can't remember if we've done beer or if we keep on thinking that we might do beer. I think we did beer one time. Okay, yeah. that's that's right. Well, we, we did it once, but we did not inhale. And here's the thing. Tonight, we have got a, a cognac. Uh, we're doing cognac. <laughs> we're doing cognac and an Irish whiskey. Oh, snap. Yeah. Oh, right. That's right. It's not just cognac. Yeah, we're mixing it up a little. <laughs> we bit. are. We're mixing it up. All right. So we got we got some cognac. We got some Irish whiskey. Now this is fun because of course Irish whiskey, something that um, you know you and I are friend. You know, we are friendly with the yeah, Irish whiskey. No, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know we've done uh done stuff from Jameson before. Um, but you know there was just uh, I, what was our most recent one that we did? It was the uh, we did the cask mates. The cask mates. Yeah. And gosh, that stuff was so good. Of course, I got another bottle of that recently. Man, I, yeah. it, I'll fight you for it. Woo! I mean, that, yeah, that stuff was great. It's uh, it you know aged in uh, these uh, porter porter barrels or uh, whatever. You know, it's just uh, you know got a real kind of rich, creamy flavor. And um, and and you know, I've discovered some other Jamesons that I thought were kind of interesting lately. So uh, and, and then we've also uh, just happened to have this uh, really uh, interesting cognac here. And, uh, and, you know, these are two, uh, whiskeys that, you know, just aren't, I guess as popular or, you know, cognac isn't a whiskey. These are two liquors that maybe aren't quite as popular on the American market as a bourbon or, uh, you know, even a scotch to some degree. Of course, you know, Irish whiskey is popular, but, um, but anyway, we thought we'd just kind of kind of go there and mix it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they kind of serve different purposes, right? I mean, uh, like, which one do you want to kick things off with? Yeah, I think I think we're going to start with the Jameson. Okay, so, so that's the thing. Jameson's, yeah. you know, when you think of kind of bourbon or, or, uh, or scotch, I mean, you, you, you think in a... Uh, I mean, there's there's good cheap bourbon, and I don't want to bash yeah. it or anything like that. In fact, just uh, recently, I had uh, some wild turkey, which was was fantastic, dude. I'm I'm sorry, that's my house blend. It, like it, I look, if I if I'm gonna drink whiskey at the house, and it's something that I buy, <laughs> like it's it's probably gonna be wild turkey. Yeah, it's it's a good it's yeah. a good uh, cheap Just bourbon. For what it is, you yeah. put it in the fridge, it kills all the flavor and does the trick. It's one <laughs> do it. Uh, but no, you know, I th I think, and maybe this is something of a negative stereotype, but sure. I, I do think that you know when you think Irish whiskey, there's kind of a tendency to think, oh, cheap whiskey, so we can get drunk right. like the Irish. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I think. Well, I think a lot of folks, you know, they go into to an Irish whiskey thinking, okay, well, this is kind of the working man's whiskey. We're going right. to, we're, we're drinking it to get the job done kind of thing. But, um, man, Irish whiskey, of course, has come a long way. And Jameson, 
uh, is just such an iconic product. And um, and I mean that in a very honoring way, a, a very reverent way. I mean, Jameson has been uh, just around for so long and 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 they do put such a, a effort into making such a quality product and, and recently have come out with all these hits, all these uh, really awesome uh, you know, variations of, of their product that I think have, uh, have really hit the nail on the head. So anyway, tonight, uh, the, the variant we're doing Jameson, this is Jameson black barrel. Um, it's, uh, it's charred for a rich, smooth taste. It says triple distilled Irish whiskey. Ooh. Uh, it's 40% alcohol by volume, 80 proof. And, um, and this is the, uh, the 750 milliliter fifth, uh, bottle, but um, it, on the back of it, it says uh, a tribute to the legacy of charring barrels before filling them. Our coopers call it bringing the wood back to life. Uh, Black Barrel mm -hmm. features charred and double charred bourbon barrels that deliver unique spiciness, vanilla sweetness, and nutty notes. So, um, just a really, uh, really nice bottle. Uh, you know, it, very simple, but the uh, you, you know the the Jameson uh, you know whiskey in there just has a real beautiful uh, amber color uh kind of reminds you of oh, a man. maybe a lucite stem on a pipe or something yeah uh, but uh man just really really lovely and um th this particular whiskey um what they've done here of course uh, you know we are all familiar with the concept of charring oak barrels right so you've got uh you know oak barrels uh barrels that are um you know, pre-charred and then the the alcohol goes in there and that that charring kind of allows that um, you know, that crustiness to in, infiltrate into the, um, into the whiskey. A lot of folks assume because it's charred like that, that, um, you know, the, uh, that the, the whiskey would take on kind of a smokiness to it, uh, kind of a, kind of a smoky, almost a burned flavor in a, in a good way. Um, but what's interesting is, is the charring, uh, almost does not quite the opposite, but it does something mm. different that I think a lot of folks don't, uh, don't quite recognize it accomplishes a few things when you char a barrel um, it opens the wood up so that the the um, the whiskey can interact more with the depths of the wood and get more of those flavors oh, in there yeah. and a lot of times those flavors are actually things like vanilla and caramel which literally come from the chemical process uh, which occurs um, when you put heat to the wood huh and so you, you've got these oak barrels uh, they've been uh, burned, scorched, and and the chemicals within the wood itself, we're talking natural, uh, just, you know, matter within the wood, they, they're reacting to create these vanilla and caramel uh, overtones, which are just really uh, powerful. Of course, the longer you char it, the more intense that is, and, and the more it's going to open up these caverns and cavities for that whiskey to get deep into that barrel and uh, and kind of soak more and more of that up. So, so there's an intensity of the charring. You've got charring that happens uh, you know, a, a once charred barrel, you know, multiple times charred barrels. And then, uh, you know, you can age this, these, uh, these whiskeys uh, in them for a variety of time that uh, changes the intensity of that. So a lot of folks think that the charring actually came from like, you know, where they were pre-using barrels. Like maybe you had a barrel that you used to store something, you know, totally unrelated in like, you know, salt or, right. uh, you know, I don't know. Pheasants. Yeah. Pheasants or who knows? Yeah. Bobbing for apples. I don't, I don't know what you did in your barrel, but the idea was, you know, a lot of folks think that the charring kind of came as a way to purify the barrel, get it, uh, get it to where you could age whiskey in it. Um, but then they realized that that, uh, that imparted its own kind of flavor to it. So, um, anyway, just something interesting, but it does, um, does have that. So let me pour us a, let me pour us a dram here. Yeah. Now, now why are you doing that? Um, I, you know, I, I always love, uh, enjoying a little I Irish whiskey. Uh, to me, I always think about the fact of, uh, you know, the, the working man drinking his Irish whiskey while going down to the local pub or tavern and then joining in some uh, Irish drinking songs. And uh, you're not about to sing. No, 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 no. I, 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 <laughs> I have sworn off singing on the show for quite uh, for, for as long as I possibly can. <laughs> Um, but but it does remind me there is a, a Irish drink. I won't sing it, but uh, all, yeah. for, all for me grog. Have you ever heard this song? I may have, but I'm not familiar with it's it. It's all for me grog, me jolly jolly grog, uh, all for me beer and tobacco. And so like it's look at that. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's one of those Irish drinking songs that also involves a little pipe tobacco in there. So. Yeah, no, that's good. Cheers. Hey, cheers. All right, Jamesons. Okay, I'm telling you, they've been crushing it recently. I, between that cask mates and this, like, like, well done. It's, I mean, like, what, what do you think 
uh, do you think that there was kind of a concept of they were just getting too stale of Jameson's just being well, like literally Jameson's is a constant feature in a lot of Irish drinking songs. Like literally their brand, the actual brand, yeah, it yeah. gets thrown out a lot of times in it. So there's almost kind of like this: uh, we're gonna go get drunk and we're gonna get the. Tr it's almost become like the Bud Light of, of well, or the Jack world. the Jack Daniels, right? I mean, you, you think about American whiskey culture and the old you know uh, saloon or honky tonk or whatever you've got this uh you know kind of staple that everyone always goes to you can mm. always count on uh jack and coke you know or <laughs> uh, <laughs> uncle jack and uncle jim as it were or whatever right, right, and, right. you know jameson's just always there but i i think it probably points more towards uh rather than staleness like just a just a real competitiveness in the modern whiskey market i mean you think about the small batch and boutique whiskeys that have come around how, how big of a deal that is i mean even even stuff like you know the ability for us to have whole series of episodes based on you know whiskey tastings and that that's a popular thing people do distillery tours and uh mm. you know collect bottles they swap bottles they invest in bottles for even uh you know uh, their you know kids you know college savings and all kinds of stuff i mean it's a it's amazing it's almost uh you know, like uh, putting your money in to some degree in gold or firearms or, you know, silver or something like that just to preserve it's, a its tangible value. Item it's really can, interesting. Could yeah. go back to a bit of a barter but, system. Sure. But there's so much uh, energy right now around this whiskey culture. Uh, and I think Jameson is just doing what, you know, most, most, uh, you know, most blenders and distillers are doing now, which is just, uh, you know, focusing on, on making the next new interesting thing. You know, I definitely pick up the vanilla notes that you uh, referenced earlier. Um, it is. I mean, <laughs> it's funny having these these new newer Jamesons uh, uh, whiskeys because they they it's not that they don't taste like Jamesons, but I think you do have kind of some preconceived notions going into yeah, a glass sure. of it. And yeah, this one is uh, this is a bit more complex than you might expect. Yeah, I, I really like it. So um, the the nose on it is uh, I think distinctively kind of a cocoa or chocolate flavor, um, but then when you taste it, you immediately get kind of vanilla and uh and kitchen spices in the in the tasting so um anyway the pairing kitchen tonight I, I did you like that I yeah did, like did that. you like yeah, it's yeah. very but that, <laughs> there's you know a lot of times that that's um that's the that's the best way i know how to describe something. oh yeah but, you're spot on um so anyway tonight the pairing with this i'm very proud of this one um is uh is a tobacco that's an old favorite of the country squire we reviewed this tobacco a long time ago um and uh but i don't believe it's ever been paired with anything and i, I thought this was a great opportunity to to bust it out and i can't wait to smoke some of this uh later tonight but um this is mcclellan's dark star uh and, and I, I think this is such a great a great pairing mcclellan's dark star comes in this beautiful uh signature mcclellan oh, yeah. tin um it's oh, you their, know that's mcclellan it, it's from their personal reserve line and so you look at the tin and uh, it's got that really gorgeous gold you know leaf seal that's on the very front uh dark star pipe tobacco flanking both sides of that seal uh and then personal reserve um the um the what is it? <laughs> you said seal and i was like that's not a seal that's, that's a whale that's a whale <laughs> <laughs> the the mcclellan uh the mcclellan seal has a whale on it right, right, right. that's right but but it, you're right that is a whale <laughs> uh the dark star pipe tobacco the description it says um years before tinning dark star begins as bright sugary top grade virginia mm. and carolina leaf uh through careful aging pressing and stoving it becomes rich cool and dark with a seductively spicy aroma and complex flavor. Um, I love this tobacco. This tobacco is uh, is kind of polarizing. It's one of those that if you don't like it, you really don't like it. Oh, snap. Well, when you open the tin, it's got that just, you know, signature, obviously, McClelland, uh, you know, vinegar, ketchup on the nose, uh, kind of a medicinal iodine that just stings you a little bit. But when you, when you smoke this particular tobacco, um, these are Virginias that are stoved. And, and, and I loved... I love I love stove Virginias. Uh, I think they're kind of a not really an underrated tobacco, but just an overlooked tobacco. Mm. They're a tobacco that mm -hmm. aren't really uh, around a lot. If they're uh, if they're ever in a blend, they're generally kind of lurking in the background as a as a you know something to tie other flavors together, or um, you know as a as just kind of a, a component that backs everything up. But oh, um, but stove Virginias are, are so good. These are tobaccos that have literally been you know cooked uh, by griddle basically. I mean, they've kind of been griddled. And so the, the sugars actually start to caramelize. And, and I like because the, uh, the tobacco is very complimentary, I think with the, with the charring of the oak barrel. Yeah. I mean, you think yeah. about, you know, the, the griddling process and, and just heat, heat pulling out sugar. Uh, That's right. Yeah, I mean, I, I can definitely kind of see that. Going of course, we you know we're not completely versed with the uh, with the physics behind it or anything like that. But the, <laughs> but you know the, there is heat a, make good taste. Heat make good taste with sugar. 
I'm Gawa. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's so it it's so uh so delicious. You know, you've got this uh, the the product eventually, particularly with Dark Star, it becomes a silky and soft Virginia that uh, just has these kind of uh you know wispy uh wispy sugar flavors which are uh just very very cool to smoke uh easy going uh and and bring out in the background ho- hints of uh, vanilla but also even um if you're if you'll just smoke it slowly and are very deliberate uh will bring out some sweet cream as well which i think is really nice so um i i just thought it paired very well with the with the james yeah Bond. i mean you've got kind of a, a bit of a darker tasting uh irish whiskey a darker tasting uh tobacco to go along with it yeah i definitely see the uh, the complementarism going on there complementarianism uh, did, did i mispronounce it no i just think that's a <laughs> did I make up term. the word <laughs> 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 it complements one another. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> man. So that's that. Um, you know, we have never uh, talked about on Country Squire Radio, as far as I can remember, um, a brandy or a cognac. Um, oh, yeah. Have we ever? Have we ever talked about? Have we ever talked about brandy? Uh, not not. We've never done like a dedicated Squire. I don't think select we've done brandy. a Squire select to brandy. Mm-hmm. I know we've probably had some brandy on the air. We've talked about brandy sniffers before, and kind of the uh, the the iconic imagery of like a brandy and a, let's say a cigar or something of that nature. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, even you know, you almost feel like a, a brandy glass is like like built around the idea that you're going to hold it, and in like between your pinky and your uh, index finger you'll also have a cigar like propped right there while you're holding the glass I'm, I'm, like, just, i like that yeah that imagery is just there and as you're i think of, i know what i'm doing after uh after this tonight <laughs> right right <laughs> uh so yeah so you know brandy has been something that um i've always been uh kind of interested in um i remember the first time I, I i got a glass of brandy i think i actually bought a bottle of cognac i poured myself a glass and yeah. then i took a swig of it and i was like what what is this like my brain <laughs> you know my, my whiskey bourbon brain couldn't quite process uh yeah what exactly this was for but i've personally kind of come to appreciate brandy in a lot of new ways of course it's it's uh it's an ingredient in a lot of cocktails classic cocktails yeah, i guess that that's right you know a lot of those uh w- what's popular now the prohibition era cocktails you know that are, absolutely you know, real craft cocktails and all that well and you know back uh you know a couple episodes back i kind of shared my uh my terrifying experience at sleep no more uh, but but one of the, the the cool things that came out of that experience is you know that they one of the beverages they almost exclusively served was a champagne cocktail yeah and like you know yeah. you know we we drink champagne and flutes now this is back when champagne was served when like kind of the no the, the wide those, brim yeah wide brim glass you think of uh uh, uh Leonardo DiCaprio in the in uh, the, no, no, the, the uh, uh Great Gatsby, Gatsby movie yeah Absolutely. that's right that's right and so like that's the thing and man, I remember see, you drink a champagne in the in the wide brim glass see <laughs> man that's how we do it I remember very specifically watching the bartender make this thing and like basically she took a sugar cube hit it with bitters uh, you know, crushed it and then kind of swirled it around in that glass, then hit it with some brandy and then of course topped it off with champagne. And I was, I was intrigued and I was, I, I kind of walked off of that, that whole experience and remembered very specifically enjoying those champagne classic cocktails. And so yeah, I actually bought this, this, this bottle of cognac for that reason to That's kind of funny. Yeah. make them and, and do that along with other, other uh, various things as well. But the whole concept of drinking brandy out of the brandy sniffer and kind of enjoying it slowly. I remember when I lived in Memphis, there was a, uh, a gentleman who would always go on every single Sunday to uh, a restaurant called Bosco's where they had a Sunday brunch. Yeah, I've heard of that before. It's an awesome, yeah. awesome little kind of uh, Tennessee chain. And uh, there was a, a jazz band that would come in uh, with uh, just a gorgeous singer. She just had this amazing voice. This old dude would roll in. He would always order a glass of brandy and i gotta tell you i never once saw that guy drink the glass he just sat there swirled it and <laughs> sniffed it the entire time i came back several times over and never once saw him took a swig of it i think he was just there doing it for the look that, they're probably so <laughs> probably so it, there was something about the chi of the brandy that that in, increased the experience exactly but <laughs> but the visuals of of you know the brandy and tobacco going together i mean i think that's always in my mind has always been kind of tied together so i'm excited to introduce a little the, cognac this is this is great i've I, so as 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 a personal side, I've been wanting to do a brandy or a cognac for a long time oh. on Country Squire Radio as, as a pairing. Uh, the problem is, you know, we're next to a very fine liquor store right next door. Uh, mm. Or I'm sorry, if you're from the Old South, you call it a package, package store. store. Right. The, the package store, a liquor store that just t- that, that sounds too, uh, you know, beneath, you know, the, the gentry or whatever. But um, at, at the package store next door, um, you know, yeah, occasionally I go in there and I say, give me a give me a fine brandy. Like, what's a good brandy? And and the guy always kind of looks at me, 
<laughs> like he kind of, you know, those dogs that kind of they, they're looking at you trying to understand, and so their head kind of cocks to the side. Turns to the right? side, yeah. Like, like a good brandy, I, I think for a lot of these, you know, uh, alcohol aficionados, liquor aficionados, spirits, and all this, um, a good brandy is kind of a kind of an oxymoron. <laughs> There's just some not a lot that are really on the market. That's the problem. There's not okay. a lot of good brandies on the market, um, particularly available. Uh, you know, kind of where we where we are. So. Um, that's why when you find one, it's kind of kind of interesting to explore it and and look into it because you know so many of the brandies that are available just at your run of the mill uh, package store, you know, are just not gonna they're just not gonna be that great, you yeah. know, and, unless you're willing to spend you know spend 150 bucks, you know, on, on a bottle or something like that. Which unless you're like a connoisseur, like why? why yeah, would you do that? I mean, I just man, I got bills. I mean, come on, yeah. So uh, anyway, tonight we are, uh, are. Are you appropriately setting up the fact that the bottle that this of is brandy, a good one? Oh, okay, all right. That, that, this is a good one. I didn't know. So, yeah, no, we're we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, this is this is not like Old Charter Eight. Okay, eight, <laughs> no, right. A, a, age, age, age for eight seasons. Right. This is not the old. This is not the old charter of. Uh, by the way, our did I tell you? I don't know if I told you and our our friends. Uh, you know, uh, our our friend the hurricane that comes into the country squire oh, yeah. and, and regularly drinks old charter eight. Of course, uh, he went next door recently to buy his. Uh, you know his his daily they banned him <laughs> not daily bottle but you know <laughs> weekly weekly bottle of old charter and uh and, and and you know the guy he walked up to the counter uh with his uh with his fifth and uh put it on the counter and uh, his old charter uh you know eight and um and the the guy looks at him and is like oh you buying old uh eight days here huh <laughs> and he just lost his gourd like it was great <laughs> brilliant <laughs> it, was, it was fantastic brilliant. so we want more of that we want more opportunity to uh to rip on that individual who drinks Old Charter. And Old Charter itself. And Old Charter itself. Even though it's got its place, I mean, there are pipes that need to be cleaned and, uh, you know, acid on batteries that need to be washed off. And, Old Charter will always uh, have its place because of the significance you know, with this store and the history of it. I, so from that standpoint, <laughs> No, no, no. It, it, regardless of the quality of the actual liquor itself, <laughs> the lore is, is, uh, gives oh, it's it a, there. It gives it a plus 10. Oh, it, oh, it's there. All right. So, <laughs> so but, tonight, but this is tonight. not the old charter. This is not the old charter of Kanye. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, t tonight we're looking at C by Curvassier. Curvassier. Uh, this is, this is, uh, actually, a, a one of their, uh, lines that is kind of a kind of an offshoot. It's something, something new that they've done. It's called C by Curvassier. So, uh, Curvassier. Is a cognac. Uh, it comes in this kind of. Uh, uh, I don't even know how you describe it. It almost looks like a. Uh, the bottle looks like a plunger turned upside down or something. It's got a very nice uh, genie bottle effect to it, and uh, really smoky stained glass at the top. It's clear towards the bottom, uh, and then on the back, uh, it says discovered. Discover C by Curvassier, a crafted cognac that is uniquely blended and aged in oak barrels for a bolder flavor and smoother finish. C by Curvassier is the essence of our revolutionary spirit. Um, so what is what, what what's going on here? Brand, and we, we're talking about brandy and cognac. We're kind of throwing those two terms uh, around together. Brandy and cognac are are similar. Uh, cognac, I loosely phrase cognac is kind of a type of brandy. Uh, brandy is a much more general term for uh, the distillation of wine. Okay. So you get, you get wine and you're like, okay, I'm gonna make a brandy out of this wine. So you, you distill the alcohol out of wine and that eventually in a very rough sense becomes cognac ah. or be, 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 becomes brandy. Uh, and then, you know, specific types of that that have such, you know, such and such vintage or, uh, you know, are grown in certain areas or, you know, things like that made of certain grapes, um, you know, those can become cognac. But cognac is, is generally seen as kind of a, a type of brandy. Um, I'm I, so glad you explained that to me because yeah. I had no idea. No, that's it. That's it. So, and, and that's yeah. why you'll see them paired often together in, in liquor stores. You know, you'll see cognacs and brandies uh, together and, and people, you know, use those terms a lot of times interchangeably. It's kind of like, uh, kind of like sparkling wine and champagne, you know, you've kind of got, uh, they're they're both similar, but champagne, of course, is going to be a sparkling wine that is you know grown in certain areas. It's uh, you know made in certain ways that makes it a little more exclusive. It's got to be and, from the Champagne region, and right? I, I think there's something yeah, you know yeah. involved. I, again, I don't know all the all the ins and outs, but um, both of these are derivatives of of wine. Uh, the alcohol is distilled, uh, you know, again to make the brandy or the um, or the cognac. Qu cognac has to be uh, distilled twice. Uh, and aged a minimum of two years in French oak barrels. Um, and typically it's going to be of white grapes. 
um, from very specific regions of France. There's a cognac region in France. Again, I'm not Ooh. super familiar with that, but um, but I'd love to love to go there and see that and uh, and and stumble back to my French villa after uh, trying several uh, CSR pipe show in France uh, coming in 20. Hey, hey, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it, see from Curvassier, this is, uh, this is great because this is good cognac that actually is only 35 bucks a bottle. Woo! Like it's amazing. Like if, and to think about that, like the decent cognacs that are on the market, a lot of them, I mean, a lot of them start, gosh, I mean, we're talking 70, 80 bucks a bottle and kind of go up from there. I, I, next door, I don't even think the guys have, you know, uh, cognacs that are under, you know, under $150. I mean, Dang. they're just really, you know, if a, a lot of folks that like cognac, like very high end cognac. And so, wait, so, so, so you're telling me this is, no, this is a, that, what, 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 what Curvassier has done is they've made a great cognac right, at the right. $35 price point. Nice. And, I, and I just think it's a brilliant thing. I, you know, again, I don't know how they did it, but what, what they have done is they, um, they have, aged the the cognac in new barrels for strength okay so you've got think of uh, a, a, a brand new barrel these are woods that uh, you know have not had a lot of the uh, flavor sucked out of them by you know previous moisture or anything so uh, those new barrels the the liquor that is going into that new barrel it's going to be very sharp uh, you know intense flavors lots of power uh, a lot of woody tones that kind of come out of there I almost even think of all uh, like a, um like a oriental pipe tobacco something that's kind of uh um kind of woody and cedary mm. uh you know think of those flavors but what they do is they actually take it after it ages in those barrels for a while uh and put it into an an aged oak barrel so it was something that's actually been aged uh and and is mature that french oak um and, and so what that does it kind of takes all those real intense uh, you know, rich, you know, kind of cedary flavors and it rounds it out. It kind of takes the edges off of it, uh, which is really nice. So, um, you know, I, I, I just think this is, uh, just a, just a neat product. So, um, anyway, let me pour us up. Yeah. Pour up a little Cavassier, of course, the uh, beverage of choice of the ladies man from SNL back in the day. No, no, younger. Who is that guy? You remember that? You remember the, uh, Ooh, it's the lady. It's the lady. <laughs> Was that Eddie Murphy? No, <laughs> no, that was. Who Ali was that? Um, gosh, what is what was that actor's name? I can't even remember. He also he he I'm blanking on his name at the moment, but he he appeared in a lot of great classic SNL sketches, like the um, uh, he and uh 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 was the guy who you know was crazy. Uh, what what's the actor who talks like this? He was in the Jungle Book recently. <laughs> I'm not blanking on this guy. I'm terrible with actors. I know the um, but that's gonna wash over on the Twitter here. They'll, they'll hit us up in a minute. Oh, I'm sure we'll be you know bludgeoned for not knowing. So cheers, cheers. Oh yeah, that's smooth. It's really great. Mm. It, it and it and again, it's it's surprising. You know, you think about a uh, you know, a, a fine cognac kind of at this price point, and and again, you know, you walk into a really nice package store, and they look at you like. No, <laughs> like I don't think that exists. But but what what Cravassier has done here is they've come out with a product that that I think really does hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, I guess through the uh, you know double barrel processing or whatever, it's just gone through these uh, aged uh, French oak barrels, and it really has taken some of that sharpness off. Um, but it still maintains a lot of its uh, you know kind of fruity sweetness, mm -hmm. which is which is really good. By the way, hardcore gear change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when the Irish whiskey and the Kafasi. Yeah, I know, right? I know. Tim Meadows, by the way, the ladies' man, and uh, Tim Christ Meadows, Christopher Walken. The two of them appeared in a lot of different sketches in SNL back in the day. Christopher Walken was the failed impression I was trying to do. Thank you to our <laughs> studio audience for pulling that up on Google. That's great. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, you know, obviously, this is um, there is almost kind of like a dessert nature, right? Like with, exactly with the sweetness. And again, uh, most people think of a cognac or a brandy as a as a dessert, a dessert. Uh, liqueur, something that you have after dinner. Um, you know, it's rich, it's thick, it's kind of, uh, it coats the back of your mouth, which mm -hmm. I think is kind of nice. Um, and so when you smell this in the glass, you're you're getting kind of, uh, you know, alcohol, medicinal, medicinal uh, you know, kind of a, a little sting. Uh, and, and then there's also the essence of fruit, maybe apples. Um, and then when you, when you, uh, when you taste the, the liquor, um, you really get, 
orange. I just get straight up orange. It's kind of funny. You get oh, wow. orange and apple. It's just a straight up kind of uh, fruit medley. But but the orange, this I think, really stands out. This man the best out. palette on the internet. Like, are, <laughs> I feel like we need to enter you into like competitions somewhere. You know, it's incredible. You just learn a lot of adjectives when you're in a business like me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But I really think that that's there, and uh, and and I think it's um, I think it's really nice. Again, um, you know, it's very smooth. Uh, there are toasty flavors back there, so you kind of get this uh, this warm sensation of uh, maybe a maybe a buttered toast or something. But uh, but certainly the orange and the apples are kind of forefront. I now, think. what I love is when you describe the beverages. In my mind, I'm trying to think, okay based on the notes that you're pulling out right what does that mean and i always i play a little game with myself where i try to guess what the tobacco is going to be <laughs> and I, I i'm looking down i don't think i'm right on this one so I'm no i don't think so it. What you got? <laughs> so this one i had a little fun with this and I, I i went back and forth on a few different uh different options but um i i just felt at the end of the day that uh that a nice cognac like this uh had to had to be paired with an aromatic tobacco mm, um mm. there's a lot uh, a lot to be said for the the citrus notes, the fruitiness of the cognac. It's uh, it's it's you know rich and creamy. It's got uh, kind of this uh, mouth coating, uh, you know, uh, texture and all this type of stuff. And so um, I thought there would be an interest in in pairing it with maybe a fruit aromatic. Uh, and so I tried um, something I haven't tried in quite a long time, and I thought it was a, a, a fun pairing. Uh, and I encourage y'all to try this at some point if you're a fan of aromatic tobaccos. If you haven't, but um, this is a this is an aromatic tobacco. It's been around a little while. It's a it's a very good seller. It's uh, probably one that doesn't get a lot of a lot of respect. Uh, you know that it that it uh, may or may not deserve. But uh, but one certainly worth trying. It this is CAO uh, moon trance. Uh, it's Ooh. a, it's, it's moon trance. It's exotic fruit and bourbon vanilla. Uh, and it's made from CAO. It's in their flavors edition. That's because when you pour a little bit of Cavassier, you put her in a bit of a moon trance when it's a lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. So <laughs> aromatic meets aromatic. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Moon trance. When you're looking at the, uh, the actual branding of it, you know, you look at the 10 straight on and That's you right. do almost feel like it's putting you in a trance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, like it was very, very well crafted with the, um, you know, the, the circles being nothing is on center, but perhaps that's the moon that's staring directly at you. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of kind of drawing you in. Man, yeah. exotic fruit and bourbon vanilla. So well of, of CAO's flavored uh, tobaccos that they uh, have come out with, they are one of the uh, big cigar brands that have, you know, kind of uh, been in the pipe game for quite some time, actually. Moon Trance has been out for, for quite a while. They have another, uh, another several... Uh, tobaccos. Eileen's Dream is uh, kind of a, I think, kind of an Irish cream flavor. They're just sleeping. They've over got there, a, aren't they? a Bella Vanilla, Cherry Bomb, a lot of, a lot of different ones. But, um, but CAO, they have, uh, you know, have come out with Moon Trance, and again, again, this is going to be their best seller in the, uh, in in the tobacco uh, pipe tobacco that they've created. But um, there is a very distinct uh, fruit and vanilla uh, note to this right off the bat, and uh, and it and it's just really. Uh, it's really it's really creamy, of course, like a lot of tinned aromatics. Uh, it, it does have just a dash of, of bite to it. I mean, there is a an element of bite. But what I like mm. about pairing it with the Curvassier C is that, uh, you know, the C is so incredibly smooth and it's so incredibly tongue coating that it kind of um, it kind of it kind of negates some of that bite. It's really interesting. Uh, so you've got a ribbon cut tobacco that is incredibly, uh, you know, sweet. It's got this uh, kind of, you know. Uh, you know, fruity thing going on, but but it pairs nicely with the the cognac that we've selected because that cognac is just very, um, it's very tongue coating and very very soothing. It's really nice, masterfully paired. Ah, well done. <laughs> well. There's a, I think with the CAO the the Moon Trance, there's a bit also, um, you know, anytime you have a rich, smooth, dark dark liquor, you've got whether it be brandy or or cognac or, or anything of the sort, scotch even to some degree, you've mm. got uh, kind of this, um, uh, this um, there's a creaminess there that uh, the only way I know to describe it is like a nougat. It's a very, uh, it's a very kind of thick, semi-sweet creaminess. Kind of like from a Heath bar? Or are you thinking like, like, like a, like, 
oh gosh, I guess nougat is there, there is no other word to describe yeah, it's nougat. Just, it's just nougat. Yeah. yeah. It's just nougat. And, like and three musketeers nougat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and so I think I think maybe the CAO, the moon trans kind of has some of that going on as well, which is uh which is really nice. And, and particularly paired with um, you know, this real creamy uh, you know, uh tongue coating uh, you know, cognac. I just think it goes uh goes quite well. Oh, well done, sir. Yep. Well done. Excellent, excellent pairing there. Of course, uh, Cavassier. Uh, C, C. C by Corvassier. C by Corvassier. That's right. Uh, the C stands for Corvassier, one imagines. Or, of course, it could be C. C? C for Catwoman. Or get- <laughs> it's from the old Adam West Batman. Or it could right just there. be Corvassier by Corvassier. That, that, that is exactly right. <laughs> Well, man, excellent, excellent pairings. Yeah, it was fun. You know, the great thing is whenever we're pairing up uh, pipe tobaccos with beverages or whatever it may be, uh, you know, it's a great way to encourage folks to to t- to sample a lot of different things, a lot of different tobaccos. It's important to, to kind of expand your palate. Maybe you are the next John David Cole in terms of trying to uh, create this amazing palate within yourself. But you don't want to necessarily put a bunch of different tobaccos in your $300, you know, briar pipe. You, it's going to get a little crazy there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to dedicate the briar to what it's going to be. If you're going to want something that you can kind of switch out tobaccos, get a good, clean smoke, and know that you're getting the flavor every single time, uh, you want to check out the pipes from Missouri Meerschaum. That's right. That's right. Our friends at Missouri Meerschaum make uh, incredible pipes at a very affordable price that always come from, uh, you know, excellent materials. They grow the corn themselves from, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, finely, uh, you know, selected uh, harvests and things of that nature. Uh, of course, the stems are always, uh, you know, uh, put together well where you can, you know, swap them out if you need to. Mm. A lot of them take filters. Uh, there's a variety of sizes and shapes. You've got deep bowls, uh, small bowls, uh, long stems, short stems, bent and straight, uh, <laughs> just all over the map. And uh, a lot of folks think corn cob pipes look uh, all the same, but, uh, you know, at Missouri Meerschaum, they've taken a lot of time to develop a lot of different um, you know, variations. So you even have different finishes on the outside of your uh, of your pipe. Some pipes are varnished. Some pipes are uh, more rough and kind of a natural uh, rustic look. Uh, you've even got some pipes that have um, kind of a simulated plateau on the top mm. where they've kind mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, taken that to, to look almost like a plateau briar. Um, so uh, just just some really great looking pieces. Uh, they're they're uh, highly affordable, highly customizable, and uh, and great for trying all kinds of new tobaccos. Yeah, I got to tell you, if you've got somebody that's a friend of yours that thinks that uh, you know all corn cob pipes look exactly the same, show them Missouri Meerschaum pipes. And in fact, let me do this. I encourage you this week if you've got a Missouri Meerschaum pipe that breaks the mold on what kind of the uh, traditional corn cob pipe is. Yeah, this is the week. Smoke it, take a picture, tweet it out to us. We'll retweet that out so that that way you can tell your naysaying friends hey check out at squire radio on twitter they will have a barrage of a lot of different <laughs> unique corn cob pipes so smoke those this week uh, let's let's spread the word on the uh, the amazing customization and quality and uh, and variety that is available through missouri meerschaum that's right all right man we got a great pipe question of the week this week are you ready sir I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. This one's coming in from Matthew S. He said, here's a pipe question of the week. I clean my pipe thoroughly after each smoke, but it but it seems that inevitably the first puff on one of uh, one of them dumps tiny pieces of char into my mouth. <clears throat> When I have when I have some privacy, I just spit it uh, spit them into a tissue paper. <laughs> this is not a classy maneuver, not one that you would want to do in the per, in the presence in others' presence. How can I avoid this so I don't have to embarrass myself in front of fellow pipe smokers in my pipe club or other folks? And again, Matthew S. <laughs> we have removed his last name to protect his uh, because you, it's just so embarrassing, so embarrassing, right? I mean, you're gonna gosh, take a puff on your you know freshly cleaned pipe and. Uh, and and you get char in your mouth, and you it's spit just, it out into a tissue. In a tissue, it's just how com- dare he? Golly, come on, Matthew, we love you, brother. That's a great <laughs> question. That is an excellent question. Um, you know, a lot of folks, uh, you know, you, you, it it doesn't de- it doesn't matter how long you've uh, cleaned your pipe, how often or whatever. A lot of times, uh, little flaky pieces from the cake that you built up or uh, whatever can uh, you know can eventually just fall off, uh, depending on. Uh, you know, where your pipe has been stored or if it's been Mm. jostled or, um, you know, anything like that. Uh, You know, a lot of folks aren't as uh, deliberate to clean it as, um, as others. And so uh, raise your hand, Bo. And, uh, and, and so they're going to have this kind of thing happen more often. Uh, A lot of folks, you know, will uh, of course thoroughly clean their pipe after they smoke it. Uh, They put their pipe away. Uh, But then also, you know, 
is something that can help you with this particular thing. And what, what Matthew's basically saying here is he cleans his pipes after each smoke, but when he lights them up again, when he's ready to smoke them again, that the, you know, you're thinking, okay, he's cleaned this pipe. It should be perfectly good to go. You know, what he's saying is when he, when he does it again, his, um, you know, a lot of times he'll get that first little bit of char or dottle uh, kind of in his, in his mouth from that initial pull. And, uh, and one thing I might recommend to you, Matthew, uh, that I always do uh, before I smoke my pipe, um, you know, I always, again, just like you clean my pipe after every smoke, I run it through the stem and the shank uh, and then also turn my pipe cleaner into the U and, and, and clean the bowl out just with a real quick uh, kind of swish around the bowl. Um, but uh, what, one thing a lot of folks do also that I find myself doing quite often is, is actually running a cleaner through the pipe before you smoke it as well. Mm. And so t take a pipe cleaner before you smoke, uh, just gently run it through the stem and the shank, um, and then, and then maybe even give it a blow, uh, blow, at, you know, out through, uh, you know, puff, instead of puffing in, you're blowing through the pipe. Clear it out the way you want it to go. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and, uh, and, and do that even before you load the pipe, do that before you, um, load the pipe full of tobacco. A lot of times too, that's helpful just because, you know, if you're like me and you've got way too many pipes anyway uh, a lot of times your pipes sit there for quite a while uh before um you know you get a, get back around to it right and so this pipe you know even though you cleaned it before you you know after you last smoked it uh it may have been sitting on the shelf for you know a few months or something before you get back to it so you know there might have been some dust that collected in the pipe or you know some you know just little you know particles that might be in there that you know it's just probably a good idea just to kind of swab that out before you uh, before you fill it full of tobacco and, yeah. and light it. So um, anyway, I think I think running the cleaner through the pipe uh, before you light it and before you load it will be nice. And then, you know, typically that cleaner is going to come out clean anyway. Uh, all you're doing is just removing those little pieces of, of char uh, that might be in there. Um, and, and so keep that pipe cleaner around during your smoke and you can use it, uh, you know, throughout your smoke. And then, of course, uh, after when you're ready to to um, to clean your pipe. So, yeah, I think I think that's it. But, uh, man, you're not alone. And if it if you have to, pipe smokers are gracious. So just spit into your tissue. Exactly. <laughs> man, I, I was thinking about that, too. Like, like and then let, let this be kind of a call to action for everybody listening to the show, be kind of a new pipe smoker or someone who's been in, in it for a while. Like when, when you're sitting around in your pipe club or just at your shop, like like let's put everybody at ease. I mean, like if, if, if you see Matt, if Matthew is in your pipe club or a Matthew equivalent, like it's cool. Like if, 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 you know, if he spits up into, uh, into his handkerchief or whatever it may be, there's no judgment, be willing to offer up some suggestions. But you know, one of the things that we love about pipe smokers is that for the, for the vast most part, uh, there's a camaraderie there. There is very much an apprenticeship that, that happens from the day that you get into it, that a lot of kind of the, the long time, uh, pipe smokers are, are willing to help bring up, uh, anybody who's new to the, uh, new to the trade. So I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like that too. I, I don't like to kind of, uh, you know, broadcast things that I don't know how to do very well, <laughs> but at the same time, whatever you do that every week on country choir radio uh, <laughs> i do it i do it for the culture my friend that's for right and for the cause <laughs> exactly so matthew doesn't feel self-conscious exactly so don't <laughs> worry matthew i'm right there with you but uh but yeah let's uh let's make sure that we're we're you know constantly um helping out uh, anybody who's new that's coming in so that's right. um, yeah great question matthew thanks so much for sending that in and hey if you've got a pipe question of the week you can send it in uh country squire radio but show at country radio.com again that is show at country squire radio.com Quick five questions! All righty, we got some quick five questions in from the forums over at thispipelife.com. More on thispipelife.com in just a moment here. All right, these quick, quiet, quick fire questions come in from CC Deer E. Great. CC Deer E. CC Deer E. Deer E. It's probably CC Deer. But anyway, go ahead. All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, Cthulhu versus Godzilla. Cthulhu versus Godzilla. I got to go with. Cthulhu or Cthulhu. Do you say Cthulhu? I don't know. I feel like it's Cthulhu. I've read enough HP Lovecraft though to to really like this character. I like his I like Lovecraft. You're, you're writing. like a Lovecraft fan. I, you know, I'm not well versed in it enough to know to be able to, you know, talk game with you about, you know, all his different works and all this, but I've read I've read enough of his works to be familiar with kind of his writing style mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the mystique around Cthulhu, the uh, the darkness that but it's also real nebulous. You don't really understand a lot of what's going on. It's kind of like walking through fog, you know. I, I don't know. I like I like all the stories that surround this this, you know, really terrible character. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean he's 
got a squid face. So what more could you want? Right? I mean, right. Yeah, yeah. I got I got to go with uh, C Cthulhu. C C Cthulhu. Um, you know, I, I honestly, I'm 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 not familiar with the source Lovecraft material. I mean, I, I'm I'm well aware of the influence that that his works has, have had and kind of continue to have on uh, on fiction and themes and and kind of. Uh, you know, in 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 many respects, he's kind of like a like a different Tolkien. You know what I mean? Like like his work yeah, sure. has been so influential in so many works that have come before it, and it's very mythological and and you know a lot of lore that's behind it. But it's less popular myth than yeah. say someone like Tolkien. No, sure, sure. When, where's the movie coming out? Love? Is there a Lovecraft? Like there? Hey, I'm sure there will be one. That's a franchise. Because I mean, we're running out of stuff to redo, right? right? Golly, we've gone through all the Tolkien stuff. We've gone through all the Lewis stuff. I'm not bitter at all. And we've gone through all, <laughs> and we've gone through so many like reboots of Godzilla that I can't even keep my head on straight. I'm gonna go with Cthulhu just because it's it's classic, and yeah. I love Godzilla. That is no slight to Godzilla, but uh, I'm with you on that. Samwise Gamgee versus Doctor Watson. That's a great question. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go with Samwise. Ooh, um, I'm gonna go with Doctor Watson, and here's why. I love Samwise. I mean, his heart, I think, represents a lot of, you know, what what he brings to the table. Like he's like this, this, this hero is kind of buried inside that, you know, before by the end you discover that he is a champion in his own right and not just kind of the 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 side dude. But here's the deal. Dr. Watson is like he's a fighter. He's he's a he's a medical dude. Like like he's he's got he's like a Swiss army knife in almost any <laughs> single situation that Holmes needs him to be. Um, you know, both characters have been reimagined from time to time. Obviously, Doctor Watson has uh, taken on a lot of different uh, a lot of different roles. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say Doctor Watson. All right, chicken fried steak or fried catfish? Gosh, this is really difficult. It, it no, we're this in is, Mississippi. This is not difficult at all. No, have you ever had a good chicken fried steak? I have not. That, that you is, have not. I have not had a good fried. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. A good, you've never had a good chicken fried steak. I don't know. I look. I. I'm going to go with fried catfish, but by a hair. Really? I, I really am, man. If it's a good chicken fried steak, like that'll make you slap your mama. Like I, that, that is, that is Sunday after church food that you go in and home and then go into your food coma for a solid three and a half hours. And it's worth every bit of it. it. Is, it it's I, fantastic. If, especially if it's got a lot of pepper on it, like, Oh, and some gravy. That is an abomination. Oh man. It's an abomination. I, I'm going with catfish, but I'm just saying that the chicken fried steak by, just, just, just barely misses. I'm gonna go with catfish because a we're in Mississippi, and <laughs> while there's a lot that we don't know here in Mississippi, we know a thing or two about catfish. <laughs> that is something I will take some pride in. We do know a thing or two about catfish. But here's the thing: chicken fried steak is an abomination. You don't chicken fry a steak. You, you can chicken fry a lot of things. I, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we got fried okra versus pickled okra. Fried okra. Uh, fried okra as well. Uh, and then finally, zombie versus mummy. Zombies. The mummies have their place. What's the I difference? Mean, I, I, isn't technically a mummy just a zombie with wraps on it? Yeah, I guess so. Right? So do you want the zombie, uh, you know, uh, plain or do you want the zombie with toilet paper? I, I I'm going like, to go with the zombie plain. I don't know. You don't know where the like toilet paper has been. <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue with that logic. Yes. Yes. <laughs> These are facts. This is great, by the way. Uh, great, great <laughs> quick fire questions in from CC Dear E, uh, loyal member over at thispipelife.com. If you have not checked out thispipelife.com, you absolutely should. Uh, it is absolutely free to join. If you use the code CSR when you register, though, it lets them know you heard about it on the show. It's a great way to help support the show and also join an awesome online community. So, again, thispipelife.com. Use the code CSR when you register at thispipelife.com. All right, man, listener feedback tonight. We've got some excellent listener feedback in from Randy. What did Randy say? Man, from Randy, he says, hey, guys, new listener, and I'm enjoying the show a lot. Uh, I have a pretty decent co commute, uh, so I can usually get an episode while driving. But sometimes I have to sit in the parking lot a few minutes to get it all in. Yeah, we go over sometimes. It's kind of a new thing. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're working we're on that. We're getting bad about, about that. that. Yeah, yeah, that's mostly my fault. <laughs> <laughs> he says, question, uh, what music do you play in the pre-, mid-, and post-show? Uh, they are all very catchy, and I would like to hear more of it. Uh, I'm a member of the Lone Star Pipe Club in Fort Worth, and I'm excited that you will be joining us for the Texas Pipe Show. Uh, I first heard your store of your store uh, when someone broke out the magical Old Toby tobacco, which we, we blend here at the Country Squire. Um, 
I do like a good aromatic, but I have never smelled anything with such a great room note before. Uh, I have to order some before I wear out my welcome at the sharing table. <laughs> Keep up the good work, Randy. Uh, man, dude, Randy, thanks for thanks for listening. And uh, man, it sounds like he's kind of enamored with the the music that we have, huh? Yeah. Okay. So I, I almost feel embarrassed. Yeah. To share this, you have to remember this 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 podcast has been going on for a couple of years, four to be exact. Yeah. And and. and <laughs> We we we've been very. I mean, we've we've added some things in terms of new segments along the way, but for the most part, we've been very like, um, what's the word? Uh, we've very, been very protective of the experience. You know, <laughs> so much so, by the way, that like our our our. Are you, you know, about to tell Randy to pound sand? Our our post. <laughs> Our post producer uh, Mike has 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 you know very righteously yeah. uh, uh, mentioned about how like what poor quality the bumps are, and I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> if I have to re-record them, then they won't sound exactly the same, and people grow accustomed to even the little no, that's right. the warts of the show. So you're kind of being aff affirmed here. The thing is, I you know I I know a lot more now than I knew back then. Sure. Anyway, all that to say. <laughs> Our bumps, uh, you will find our bumps if you have a uh, garage band and it's part of the free music that's just part of nice. garage band. <laughs> nice, man, that's great. That's why Apple hasn't removed them yet. I'm telling you. Right. <laughs> yeah, because of us. That's right. Actually, it's funny because in uh, a lot of kind of the, the legacy shows that I do, um, whenever uh, whenever the the bump music is is played for those shows, people will recognize them from like you know car dealership commercials or something like that. That be you know, yeah, something will come on and be like, hey, yeah. it's Country Square, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah. they got that tune because they were broke. Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, yeah, I hate to, to hate the bust the bubble there, but um, yeah, at, at some point we may introduce updated versions of our bumps uh, just to kind of clear out some things and make them uh, make them sound a little bit nicer. Uh, you know whether that's going to be original music or we continue to use just the, the freebie music. Gosh, just for I don't tradition know. It almost sake. sounds heretical to me to, to I, monkey with it, it. You know, it felt weird saying. Yeah, it. at this point, it's just like man, it's it's part of. It's kind of like the country squire. You know, I mean, it's a it's a beautful shop. It's it's got You've its own been charm. Making it but nice now though. Yeah, I mean, but it's kind of it's still kind of a dump though. You know, I mean, they, but but that's part of the that's part of the the thing, right? You come in here if it were too nice, you 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 wouldn't want to be here. You got the window into the humidor now. That wasn't there before. I don't know, but the floor still stained with all kinds of yeah. you know mess I, I don't know it's you know <laughs> there, there's something about that you know it's growing and it's good and it's uh it's it's positive but you know it's just kind of rough around the edges and, right. we, and we like that all right fair enough. <laughs> fair enough well i'll tell you something else we like we like getting feedback from you guys hey uh head over to itunes write us a review it's a great way to show some love for the show let us know what you think uh and also you know it doesn't cost you a dime to do it but if you are willing to spend a dime or two or three or more uh head over to countrysquireradio.com and click on join the pipe club uh the country squire radio international pipe club is uh is growing and growing as, as you hear from every single episode and uh the great thing is we've now opened up the international pipe club online squire lounge so it's a it's a really fun place you know um we were actually uh earlier this week i i kind of kicked out this idea of even doing like a a club member game night and i was just trying to get a, an idea of like who's got playstation versus uh, <laughs> xbox i know you wouldn't be involved in that but, but no i'll be sitting next to you on, on a couch somewhere just laughing hysterically while y'all are doing all kinds of you games. could commentate the best no, I'll, I'll just commentate the, the well, best what's that guy pewdiepie that doesn't oh he do that gosh. he just like talks in his goofy little Accent maybe a little about bit higher than PewDiePie. I don't let's, think so. Let's <laughs> No, but but the best, you know, the best gaming movie commentary is always by somebody who doesn't know anything about what they're actually seeing. Sure, like that's that's the best stuff. So we'll make we'll make something out of it. Okay, I like that. One way or the other, join the club, uh, and uh, and you know, uh, become part of the the Squire Online Lounge. And by the way, if you don't necessarily uh, want to join the club, or or if it's if it's too too much for you, we totally understand. We'd still love for you to help support out the show. You can become a patron again uh, if you go to countrysquireradio.com, click join the club. It'll take you directly to our Patreon account, patreon.com/slash countrysquireradio, uh, and there you can help support the club. Now, I probably should have mentioned this at the top of the show, but I'll mention it now. Next week, since I'm going to be going out to Grand Rapids for everything going on, and of course the listener meet up there, we won't have a live show. We will still have a podcast, and so we will have that coming out to you at the normal date as per usual. Uh, but there will not be a live show next week. So sorry to 
burst any of your bubbles that have got all of their planning in order for next week. But I, they've been bursted. I got to tell you, like, we won't be here. <laughs> it hurt. It even hurts me to say that. Uh, it hurts me more and more every single time that we we do kind of have to take a break from the live show. Of course, again, we will have the podcast next week. Um, but I know that a lot of you have really kind of made Monday part of your uh, part of your planning, part of your experience, part of your ritual. You know, those of you, uh, I can't remember who it was earlier this evening, but uh, tweeted out that you know Monday has become their favorite uh, day of the week, specifically because Country Squire Radio airs. I'm like, man, we conquered Monday. <laughs> so honored for that. I'm still I'm still blown away when I hear that kind of stuff. It, it's extremely meaningful. Absolutely. So next week, no live show. We will have a, a podcast out, so be sure to check the feed for that. Um, and then we will return the following week. Uh, with a live show coming at you on that Monday. And of course, that happens at CountrySquireRadio.com where you can tune into the show at that time. Uh, that is going to be at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, 6.30 Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. And again, that is at CountrySquireRadio.com. Throughout the week, by the way, you can keep up with us. You can follow me. I'm at the real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore Country Squire. And of course, all that information and more can be found at CountrySquireRadio.com. Dude, I had fun. Dude, it's Squire Select. I did Squire Select. Of course, we're gonna have fun. Oh, always. I, mean, you, I, mean, I was trying different tobaccos, and you know, bringing back some that I, you know, get inspired to revisit because of some uh, flavor I taste somewhere else. And uh, man, it's great. I, I'm telling you, this Jameson is just growing on me. I just keep wanting to go back mm. to this doggone Jameson. It's just so good. <laughs> The Irish, not, they just know what they're doing, man. I mean, Especially when it comes to booze. <laughs> they know a thing or two about whiskey. The thing is, when we compliment the Irish on, on how well they know how to drink, are we losing our Irish listeners or gaining them? No, that's, that's, <laughs> I think they'll feel affirmed. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, we'll I, I, I would think us. so. I mean, you know, they, yeah. they, they also, you know, have a lot of, I'm sure, scientists and, you know, poets and other things. But, you know. We, well, they did. Yeah. Tonight we're talking about their uh, their their whiskey. Yeah. Kilted Pipe Guy, by the way, inviting us out that way. That uh, it's You point. know, he wants to take us to, to Scotland, actually. He oh, was, is that he right? Was, he was planning a, uh, he says, we need to get to Scotland so we can actually drink some decent uh decent brown water. Oh and uh, and so I'm, I'm for that. I think we should. Can you uh, imagine Country Square Radio from Scotland? It would be a disaster never say never though no it, it, it the only reason it'd be a disaster is because it, we'd be completely worth exactly <laughs> <laughs> all right man well hey let's go have a night see you brother thanks so much for tuning in the live show guys <laughs> hey that was great yeah we really enjoyed it y'all um by the way love love seeing everybody uh giving giving shout outs to uh to kurt on his new edition as well just in the live show you know the this there's there's <laughs> the, the community of listeners is vast the uh, the pipe club has kind of gathered uh, many people together the live show is is almost its own kind of community as part of this as well so uh seeing you guys give him uh shout outs and uh and just attaboys and, and all that kind of great stuff um, it means yeah. a lot to us. It, it, really, it really does. does. It just yeah. it shows that kind of the camaraderie amongst the family mm -hmm. that we've got here. And um, yeah, so keep on showing him some love. And um, yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's going to do it for us tonight. <laughs> Good night, y'all. See you. <laughs>